Hey, Mr. Myers is here, and this video we're looking at lesson 2-5 for the essential to calculus derivative rules, the shortcuts. We don't have to use the limit definition again. Oh, you're going to be saying, thank you, Mr. Maestas, because we don't have to use the limit definition. We can use the derivative rules, which are a lot quicker, but you're going to have to memorize them. This is a part of calculus that you have to do. You have to memorize. So we're going to look at derivative rules first and some and, and how they relate to tangent lines and finding the equation of the tangent line. Then in my second video for this lesson, I'll do non-differentiability. What does it look like for functions to be not differentiable? And lastly, on the third video, I'll talk about rates of change and the different types of rates of change we're going to do and which ones are derivatives and which ones are not. So here we go. Let's get started on derivative rules. So we often say d dx, pronounce d dx is the derivative or we differentiate with respect to x, with respect to what's in the denominator. So the most common derivative is dy dx. We've got four rules that we'll talk about first. We've got the power rule, which is really easy. All we're gonna do is take the power, bring it down to the bottom, subtract one from the power, that's it. The constant rule, the derivative of any constant is zero. And then the scalar multiple rule means what basically we could just take the derivative and we have a number multiplied by the x value. We'll just leave the number there, okay, if it's multiplying. And then the sum rule or the, the difference rule, anything we could take derivatives of the sums or differences of them separately and then put them together. So let's take a look at these guys in action. Let's do some, some uh, examples here. So the first one I'll do is x to the fourth. So we're simply just going to use the power rule. I got the power right the power rule so what we're going to do is we're going to bring the four down and then we're just going to subtract one from the power boom that's it that's all there is to it what i don't have to use the whole limit you don't this is called the power rule now sometimes our powers aren't as easy as just x to the fourth we've got to deal with some fractional powers same work guys you just have to make sure you can deal with some fractions and subtracting so i'm going to bring down the negative two-thirds and I'm going to subtract one. I'm going to subtract one from from this. All right. So usually, what I have to do when I deal with fractions, I have to you know have a common denominator. That's going to be negative negative five thirds is now going to be my my power. So negative five thirds. And then we have a plus here. So we're going to do the derivative of this one and the derivative of this one separately. So what's the derivative of three? Well, three is a constant. So the derivative of three is zero. So I'm not going to put anything there, and I get that as my answer. Make sense? Hopefully. All right, now notice here we have a uh, 2t cubed on the denominator. So what we have to do is we have to convert this. So anything we, anytime we have uh, a constant in a numerator and then a variable in denominator, now this is again important, if we have two vari if we have variable in the numerator and variable in the denominator, we can't do what I'm going to show you. We've got to do something else. But in this case, we're going to switch this to 5 minus... 1 half, because the 2 stays down there, and we're going to bring this t up as a negative power, t to the negative 3, because it's in the denominator, which is a negative power. The derivative of 5 is just 0. Um, the derivative of, of t cubed, negative 1 half t cubed, I'm going to bring down the negative 3. So a negative 3 times a negative 1 half is a positive 3 halves. And I'm going to subtract 1, and I'm going to get negative 4. I can leave my answer like this. Power rule, guys, the power rule. All right, so I'm going to switch this guy again because I have it in the denominator. I'm going to switch this to 5. Um, and you know what? I don't want this in the parentheses, so I need to switch it one more. I need to do one more thing first. I'm going to do 8, which is 2 cubed, x cubed. And now I'm going to switch this to 5 eighths, x to the negative 3, just like I did the last one. And I'm going to take the derivative, f prime. And I'm going to have negative 15 eighths, x to the negative fourth, and voila, all complete, all right? So let's take a look at some other things. Now, I could do the derivative multiple times. I could do the derivative once, I could do the derivative twice, I could do it three times, I could do it four times, I could do it infinite times. I just keep doing the derivative. Um, and each derivative is, you know, we got the first derivative, which is, well, the derivative, and then we got the second derivative, and then we got the third derivative, and the fourth derivative, and we just take in derivatives of derivatives. Those are called higher order derivatives, and we can do that. We're going to need to. We're going to need to at least do the first three at some point in this course, all right? More derivatives is a little excessive, but 
necessary sometimes. Okay, so let's look at an example of a second derivative. So we're going to find the first derivative, f prime of 1. And we're going to go and do that. So first thing we got to do is change this guy, right? 1 half. And remember that a, a root is a fractional power. So this gets turned to x to the negative 2 thirds. And then I'm going to take the derivative of this guy, and I'm going to have negative 2 thirds times 1 half x to the negative 5 thirds. We just did that up there. All right. Negative 1 third x to the negative 5 thirds. And now I want to find f prime 1, so I'm going to plug in 1. And that's going to give me negative 1 third. All right, now I'm going to do my second derivative. So my second derivative is the derivative of this guy here. So I'm looking at this, and I'm going to take the derivative of that. So I'm going to have negative one-third, and I'm going to have negative five-thirds using the power rule, x to the negative eight-thirds when I subtract one, which is going to give me five-ninths x to the negative eight-thirds. And I wanted to find f double prime of negative eight, so I am going to plug negative 8 in my derivative, second derivative. And I'm going to say, you know what? Um, that's good. Because in this course, once I plug in that number, it's a value. And I don't need to simplify it. Hold on. I drink some problems. Early. Early in the morning, guys. You don't expect me to be super awake at like, you know, 6.45 in the morning when I'm recording video, right? All right. So let's take a look at one more thing that we have with derivatives. On this video, we'll talk about the equation of the tangent line. Now, we talked about uh, earlier that the uh, derivative is the slope of the tangent line. That's, kind of, that's the basic idea of what a derivative is. Uh, if you get anything out of this course, make sure you know that the derivative is the slope of the, of the tangent line. The slope of what we call a normal line, normal line just means it's the perpendicular line to the tangent line. So the normal line is the line that's perpendicular to the tangent line, so we would find it by using the negative reciprocal of whatever the tangent slope was, or negative 1 over the tangent slope. So that's just a side point that we'll take a look at in just a second. So find the equation of the line tangent to the graph. These aren't too bad. It's really simple. What you're going to do is you're going to find the derivative. You're going to plug in a value so you can find the slope of the derivative. And then you're going to use y minus, y minus y1 equals m times x minus one, x1 to find the actual equation of the line. Okay, so the first step is to take the derivative. So this is an easy power rule. 20x to the fourth minus 6x. And there's no, right, the derivative of 5 is 0. My x value is 1. So I'm going to plug 1 in for my derivative. And I'm going to get 14. This is the slope of the tangent line. Okay, so my derivative at that point is the slope of the tangent line. So my tangent line oops, is going to be, I'm going to use this y1, y minus y1. All right, what's y1? y1 is 6. I get that from over here. m of tangent, I just found. x1 is 1. And there we go, I found my line, all right? Okay. Um, just a side note here, in order for you to get credit on this, you need to have a point, and the slope needs to be a number, all right? If it's not a number, you try to do the derivative, and you just put in this, this thing in here, they're not going to give you any credit. It needs to be a value. Find the equation of the normal line, okay? Well, the normal line, like I said, is just the... Um, it's a negative reciprocal slope. So if the slope of the tangent line was 14, the slope of the normal line is negative 1 over 14, all right? We just flip it. So the normal line is going to be, we'll use the same formula here, norm. And y1 is the same number, so 6. And the slope is negative 1 over 14. We just talked about that x minus 1, and there we go, all right? 
So there you go, guys. We talked about the derivative rules, power rule, constant, uh, constant rule, um, sum rule, and uh, there was another one, uh, multiply, multiply by a constant rule. And so you should be able to do that. You should also be able to find the equation of the tangent line just using that simple method that I just did. And if you needed to, find the second derivative if you needed to. I just said that. I don't know why I'm repeating myself. We'll see you guys soon. Bye. Okay, maybe not. Bye. Here, let me pause again.